Are you running out of space on your Steam Deck? It doesn't matter if you've got an LCD or an OLED model. Modern games take up hundreds of gigabytes, and you can easily find yourself with no space left. Getting more free space on your Steam Deck is something that we all need to do at some point. So in this video, I'll show you a few surefire ways to free up some space on your Steam Deck. Let's start with the simplest method first. Now, if you've got a bunch of unplayed games, you can remove them from your machine. That might sound like a no brainer, but this can sometimes free up hundreds of gigabytes of space just by deleting one game that you don't play anymore. From the main menu, hit Steam and then go to settings, then scroll down to storage. From there, you can scroll through the games on your internal drive, and you can see just how much space each one is taking up. For example, I've got Grand Theft Auto V installed here on this machine. And while you can still play the single player story mode, GTA Online is no longer available on the deck, so we can just get rid of it. By deleting this game, we can free up 113 gigabytes of space. Scrolling down further, and I have Half-Life Alex installed here. Now you might be wondering, why do you have Half-Life Alex installed on your Steam Deck? Well, there's a mod that will make it work with a traditional screen and controllers. I haven't played this for over a year though, so we can delete it and free up 71 gigs. All right, just like that, we've cleared nearly a quarter of the internal storage of this device. That's pretty awesome, but we don't have to stop there. Right now, these games are sorted by their size, but it's also handy to sort by last played date. Now you can tap on the size on disc button and then choose last played. This will show you the games that you've most recently played. And if you scroll down, you'll find the oldest games in your library. Now, while we're on the screen, you should see this chart here that breaks down the space being used. This will give you some idea of what's taking up your system's disk space. Now we can use this as a guide. Now, sometimes Steam Workshop mods can take up a huge amount of disk space. In my case, not so much, but if you scroll through this list again, you can see how much workshop mods are taking up from disk space just by scrolling through this list and finding this badge next to games that have workshop items. You can uninstall those workshop mods, and this will uninstall the mod across all of the devices you're logged into Steam on, or you can also just delete the game from your drive. Then there's this, the non-Steam games. If you're anything like me and you like to tinker, then you've probably installed a few games outside of Steam. If you have done that, then you probably don't need me to tell you how to free up disk space in that regard. But if it's Decky Loader, if it's Heroic or anything else, you can take a look at those and free up some space there. All right, next up we have the shader cache. Now Steam will automatically download shaders for your games that you have installed on your deck, and this can take up precious space and leave you with less room for titles that you wanna play. Now admittedly, this used to be a much bigger problem than it is now, but there is still room for improvement. Going back to the disk usage graph on the storage setting page, uh, you can see that my shaders aren't taking up a whole lot of space, about 13 gigabytes, but if you have a smaller internal drive than I do, then that can make or break your experience. To clear your cache, you need to go into desktop mode, hit the Steam button, go to power, and then switch to desktop. Now let's click on the folder on our taskbar. If you don't have that there, open the Steam menu and then look for Dolphin. Now click on home under places on the left here, and then find the .steam folder. If you don't see that folder, uh, you're gonna go up here and then select show hidden files. All right, open up .steam and now go to Steam, then go to Steam Apps, Shader Cache. Now you can safely delete all of these folders and when you go to play whatever game again, the shaders will be downloaded as needed. Once you've deleted those files, go over here to Trash, and then once you're here, click this button to empty the trash. All right, next up is Media. Game recording is a brand new feature that just launched on the Steam Deck. By default, the settings make sense, but you can adjust these to suit your needs. In the settings menu, scroll down to game recording. From here, you'll see the primary options recording off, record in background, and record manually. The deck is automatically recording the last 120 minutes of gameplay, which can take up space, up to 32 gigabytes with the default settings. If you want to keep this feature active, but want to save some space while doing it, you can scroll down further and hit the quality button. By default, it's set to high, but you can set it to medium or low if you want to save some space. You can also use the length button to change the duration of gameplay saved.
However, if you're not going to use this feature, you can turn it off completely. All right, now that we've made our changes, we can go clean up some stuff. Let's hit the Steam button and then go to Media. Now hit Y and then you should see Background Recordings. Select that and now you can delete any recordings you no longer need. There we go, after all that work, we've saved hundreds of gigs from my internal storage. And I didn't even need to like set this up to make it look good or uh, whatever. Like this was literally just me uh, writing the script and deleting the stuff as I was writing the script. I picked up my deck and started writing. But I can imagine several scenarios where following these steps didn't yield the same results for you. That's where the upgrades come in. Now, the first upgrade is probably the best for most folks out there. It's the simple way of upgrading the Steam Deck storage, SD cards. There are a whole host of great options out there for SD cards. For example, there's this 1.5 terabyte option from SanDisk, which I've personally tried on my deck and highly recommend. There's also this two terabyte SD card from SanDisk, which is a little bit better. And there will be people who are skeptical about this. I mean, running a PC game from an SD card sounds crazy, but this isn't Windows, my guys. This is Linux, and Linux is a fundamentally different beast. Reading from an SD card is blazingly fast, especially when you opt for higher quality SD cards. And a two gigabyte upgrade for the deck? It's nothing to sneeze at. And look, I've played a whole bunch of different games off of an SD card, and I wouldn't be able to tell you the difference for the vast majority of them. That's how fast these things are. Now, if you have a little bit more experience and you want the absolute premium upgrade, and you don't mind cracking open the deck, there's always the option of picking up a 2230 NVMe drive and doing a little upgrade inside. Now, I've made a video about that process up here. Now, I've done this process a few times at this point, and it is fairly easy, but I wouldn't recommend it to just anybody. Now, if you don't wanna watch the video I made a few months back, I have a few recommendations. Be gentle when you're opening up the Steam Deck and you'll be fine. And if you already have an SD card, make sure you remove it before opening up the shell, because otherwise you'll destroy it. As for which drives I recommend, there's this two terabyte 2230 NVMe drive from Western Digital. Uh, I've always found great luck with Western Digital. And also as of recording this video, Corsair has a two terabyte drive on sale for just 140 bucks. You can find a link to any of the products that I've mentioned in this video below. They are affiliate links. And if you use my links, they help support this show at no additional cost to you. Well, that's it. Hopefully you found this video useful, and if you did, consider liking that smash button and getting subscribed to stay up to date with all the fun stuff that we're doing here on the channel. You can also get your name listed over here in the credits by becoming a YouTube member or a patron. There are links below for that as well. That's going to do it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.